Oh, what the f- If you're wondering why I'm so close to the camera, it's because there are a bunch of dogs outside and I want my audio to be as bark-free as possible. Sometimes I will go so far beyond liking something that I will end up in this state of just pure obsession. The thing that has caused me to realize this is actually my behavior surrounding a certain show called Supernatural. I don't know if you've ever loaded a Tumblr page before, but the Supernatural fandom is huge and very obsessive. For anyone who has never seen the show, Supernatural follows two brothers, Sam and Dean Winchester, along with an angel named Castiel, who travel the country in a 1967 Chevy Impala with Castiel, fighting monsters, exercising demons, and saving the world, with some help from Castiel. Did I mention Castiel is played by Misha Collins? The show has been running for over 10 years, they were recently renewed for a 12th season, and I have seen the first 11 seasons that have aired so far. And then when I ran out of episodes to watch, do you know what I did? I went back and I watched them all again. It was a very long weekend. Going back on the first season and seeing Sam and Dean as like little fetus Sam and Dean, it's adorable. After that I started watching all the blooper reels and then the cast performances at conventions and before you know it, I'm stalking Misha Collins on Twitter and trying to join a Gishwiss team and eating kale bars and following kale on Twitter and obsessing over kale. Bicycle touring. <laughs> And I think I exhibit these behaviors and I obsessively fangirl because it feels good to obsess. And it's not like there isn't a dark side to this. I have a theory about why people obsessively fangirl like this, and it has to do with the anatomy of your soul. Humor this idea for me for a moment. I think that deep in the darkest pits of your soul, you have this thing called an obsession sack. It's a tiny hole in your existence that is constantly hungry for something awesome, something that makes you feel like you have meaning and purpose. When you find something that you love, it fills that hole in your existence but then the hole gets bigger, leaving even more room for more awesome stuff. You find more stuff, you fill it, it gets bigger. You find more stuff, you fill it, it gets bigger. Until eventually you run out of official stuff. But that's not where it ends, because now you have this massive hole in your existence that you still need to fill. So you continue to seek out even more stuff in the form of community-made content. You realize that you are not the only person who strives to fill this emptiness in your soul with whatever it is that you're obsessing over. And then you find yourself in this beautiful community of people who are constantly trying to feed your obsession. And then you join this community and start to make community-made content to help feed other people's obsession. Until eventually, you get so emotionally invested in whatever it is that you're obsessing over that it starts to physically hurt. And at that point, you start to get over whatever it was that you were obsessed with and you're left with this massive empty pit in your soul. But don't worry, the pit doesn't stay empty for long, because as soon as you look back on all of the horrendous things that you did while you were in that fandom, that pit is instantly filled with regret. When I'm in these states of pure obsession, I know that these obsessions are not going to last a lifetime, so I have to try very hard to just ride out the storm. In my experience, the bigger that you let that obsession sack grow, the more regret it is filled with when you have ridden out this obsession storm. However, I have also found that trying to resist your obsessive fangirling in preparation for your obsession to be over just makes the obsession last longer. Here's the thing though. Obsessive fangirling feels good. It puts you in a sense of community and you get to make things and be part of something and you have something that gives you purpose and something that you enjoy to an unreasonable extent. There's a sociological concept called collective effervescence, which is actually something I found out about because Misha Collins wrote a Facebook post about it. Someone help me. Essentially the idea behind collective effervescence is that when a large group of people come together and express just adoration for something and care about something or worship something, it provides this sense of purpose and community, this uplifting internal feeling for all parties involved. It's acceptance and it's purpose and it's beautiful. Being a fan of something is just one of the most amazing feelings. And if you've never just let yourself obsessively fangirl over something, you're really missing out. You're missing out on that amazing feeling of collective effervescence. There seems to be this trend on YouTube where bigger YouTubers don't like the idea of calling their viewers fans. There's definitely a difference between being a fan, a follower, a viewer, and a friend, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being a fan. Not that kind. I don't know if fan has just become some negative word, but to me it's not. I am a fan of a lot of things. If you enjoy something, then you should just let yourself enjoy it. I think a big part of the problem is the way that we treat fandoms we're not part of. Oh my god. Look at how obsessed this girl is with Deadpool. It's pathetic. Seriously, some people just take that stuff way too far. What are you doing? I'm drawing an anti-possession symbol. A what? It's from Supernatural. It prevents you from being possessed by demons. 
You do see the irony, right? What? It's really easy to negatively judge a fandom that you don't understand. And I feel like that needs to stop. Just because we don't understand the fandoms doesn't mean that they are any less valid than our own. I think that it's okay to be a fan. I think that obsessively fangirling can be an amazing thing, and I think that we should bring back the fan. Not that one. So if you don't already, go fall in love with something. Whether it's a band, a YouTuber, a TV show, find something and let yourself go. Buy merchandise, obsess, make fan art, write fan fiction. Let yourself be a fan. Not that kind. Because sometimes being a fan just feels good. And maybe this one won't end. Maybe this one could be your life obsession. This was probably a very weird video, but I'm kind of stuck in a hotel right now and I just kind of felt like making something. If you already do have a fandom, please put it in the comment section below. What are your opinions on the term fan? Do you do you prefer to be called a viewer, a fan, a follower, or do you just not care? I feel like it more so bugs the YouTuber than the viewer. Please like this video because it's YouTube and that's what people do. You stayed to the end, so I'm gonna give you 150 awesome points. Welcome to Echo Gillette's YouTube channel where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Also, whoever it was that made this image on Twitter, I approve. Okay, I'm gonna take advantage of the hotel Wi-Fi and watch Supernatural. Bye.